Okay, so we've got a question here in three parts. Initially, we're going to find the Lorentz series about zero for e to the minus one over z. So that's our function that we're dealing with here today. Now, what we're looking for, as I just said, we're looking for the Lorentz series. Then we're going to find the general term for this Lorentz series. And then using this, we're going to find the annulus of convergence. So when we're finding the Lorentz series, we're going to need to watch uh, our terms and conditions for what z can equal. So Lorentz series, exponential minus 1 over z at 0. Well, we know a Taylor series for e to the z, which is very similar. So Taylor series at 0 for e to the z. Let's just write that as exponential to the z. Now this is 1 plus z plus z squared over 2 factorial plus z cubed over 3 factorial plus z to the 4 over 4 factorial and so on. So that's what we've got exponential of z. But we want exponential of minus 1 over z. So as we're looking for a Lorentz series, the z uh, denominator here will come into the denominator. So where we see a z, we're going to plug in minus 1 over z and then use the powers accordingly. So what we can say is, let's do it over here, exponential of minus 1 over z. So where we see a z, we plug in minus 1 over z. So the 1, that can stay as it is plus, so there's a z here, minus 1 over z. Here we've got a z squared and a 2 factorial, so we've got a little bit careful here. So leave the plus in there, the 2 factorial will stay in the denominator. Now the z squared will be minus 1 over z squared. So let's just write that here for now. Next term for the cubed. As before, leave the three, fa three factorial in the denominator, and now we've got a cubed sign for minus one over z. So minus one over z cubed, and same again for the power of four. So four factorial minus one over z to the power of four. And as before, this will still carry on. Okay, right, now let's just clean up these terms. So that equals one plus minus 1 over z, well that's just minus 1 over z. Okay, 2 factorial in the denominator, that will stay, and minus 1 squared will be a positive, so we know this is going to be a positive sign, and there will be a 1 in the denominator, but there'll be a z squared to come down the bottom with the 2 factorial. So that will be a multiplied in there, but we'll leave that as it is there. Now we've got a minus 1 over z cubed, so the next sign is going to be a minus. There will be a 1 in the denominator. The 3 factorial will stay as it did here. And now we'll have a z cubed in the denominator. And pretty much the same fashion here with this one to the power of 4. So minus 1 to the power of 4 will give us a positive 1. z to the 4, 4 factorial. And again, that goes on and on. So this is our Lorentz series. Let's just write that in over here. So we've got 1 minus 1 over z plus 1 over z squared 2 factorial minus 1 over z cubed 3 factorial plus 1 over z to the 4, 4 factorial. So that's our solution to the first part. Now we need to find a general term. So basically what we're looking for, for a general term, we're looking for a summation series. So what we're looking for is n equals zero to infinity. So how are we gonna find out to infinity? So n equals zero, here we've got z to the power of 1, let's put a 1 there, 
and we could have an imaginary one factorial there because that will still be one so that will stay as it is so here we could say this has got z to the power of zero because z to the power of zero is one and a zero factorial because that is also one one over one is still one so that stays as one so what we have here is increasing powers of z starting from zero all the way up to infinity so we can say there's a z over n in the denominator factorial is also following the sequence of the n so we've got an n factorial at the top here we've got an alternating series from negative to positive to negative to positive now the first one is positive so what we want here now is minus 1 to the n plus 1 okay so if n is 0 actually if it's only 0 we don't need the plus 1 do we so if 1 to the n okay so minus 1 to the n so n n is 0 minus 1 to the power of 0 is just 1 when n is 1 minus 1 to the power of 1 is minus 1 same here minus 1 squared gives positive so on so that will be our general term okay so we write that in here now so we've got an alternating series minus 1 to the power of n over z to the n n factorial okay that takes care of that now let's use this to see if we can find the annulus of convergence so let's just clear a bit of space here now because this sometimes involves quite big formulas okay so for the annulus of convergence for this term here we need to find one of the one of the tests so the limit tests so as it's got a factorial we can try the ratio test so ratio test so the ratio test is the absolute value of z n plus 1 divided by z n that's our ratio test that we need it's not putting on level really but okay so z to the n plus 1 z n so basically that means is the nth term in the denominator and the next term in the numerator so we use these this one here and plug that into this ratio test equation so z to the n plus 1 we just write to that as it is so that one will take us to minus 1 to the n plus 1 divided by z to the n plus 1 so whenever you see an n you write n plus 1 and multiply that by n plus 1 factorial let's put that in brackets okay so that's our zn plus 1 and now we need to divide it by zn so now big is up this divide sign here we just write zn so basically instead of n plus 1 we just want an n so now we've got minus 1 to the n over z to the n over n factorial. Okay, and again that is still absolute values. Okay, now there's another way we can write this, a little bit easier to work out for our calculations. So now we can continue here, still in absolute value, minus 1 to the n take that out and then minus 1 to the power of 1 that's using the power rule the rules of powers and rules of indices there divided by z to the n times z and n plus 1 factorial is just n plus 1 times n factorial okay that's that one and then we're right next to this one the zn but we can just flip it that way then it will be the same so actually we need that there because this can just be multiplied alongside so zn 
and fat soil. Let's try not to get these mixed up together. So then N factorial divided by minus one to the N. And again, that is all absolute value. Okay, let's take these ones off the board now, just so we don't get any confusion with that. Okay, and we take this out here as well, so we're left with just our nice little formula. Okay. Now, now what we're going to do now is just simplify this and see what's left. Minus one to the end, minus one to the end. These can cancel out. We've got a z to the end, z to the end. Pretty handy. And n factorial, n factorial. Okay. Very satisfying when we can cross all that out. So now we've got minus one. So we can say that this equals now. So we're going to get rid of the absolute value now. So now we can put the equals rather than an uh, inequality sign. Minus one to the power of one, but absolute value is just one. So that's the top taken care of. In the bottom, we've got z and n plus one. So now we've got n plus one times z. Okay, so our ratio test, this is what we've got. So we're looking to see if this converges now. So as n approaches infinity, the bottom will get bigger and bigger and bigger. So therefore this converges. So what we can say is by the ratio test, the series, as n approaches infinity, as n approaches infinity, the series converges. And what does it converge to? Well, as this gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it will get closer and closer to zero. Okay. So if we write here minus one to the n plus one z, that's our ratio test result. So this converges to zero. So what we can say, which we need to look at, so what we can say is the analysis of convergence is going to be the whole complex plane except zero, isn't it? Because our Taylor series and Laurent series is good for all the complex plane for the Taylor, uh, Taylor series originally for exponential of z, for e to the minus one over z, z cannot equal zero. So this confirms what we was uh, suspicious of in the original. So what we can say is annulus of convergence is complex plane minus zero and we can put that down here as our result okay and that's that